your daughter. You know, my hair is sticking. <laughs> Wait. Cut it a minute. Um, I do the welcome first. Okay. All right, here we go. Ready? Okay. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. We're very glad that you are joining us today. Just a couple announcements. First of all, if you haven't sent an ornament in for our Christmas tree, or um, if you haven't had a chance to write out a story or a favorite memory, this is our last call for them. And we really would love to have more. Our tree looks kind of bare. So if you could send in an ornament or if you would need me to pick it up for you, we can arrange to have that happen as well. Um, masked and distanced, of course. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Thank you. We worship this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we do so as part of our mission, which is, belong, believe, be sent, share Jesus Christ for life. 
Our first hymn is number 249 on Jordan's Banks. Banks, the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. Then cleansed be every life from sin, make straight the way for God within, and let us all our hearts prepare for Christ to come and enter there. We hail you as our Savior, Lord our refuge and our great reward. Without your grace, we waste away like flowers that wither and decay. Stretch forth your hand, our health restore, and make us rise to fall no more. Oh, let your face upon us shine and fill the world with love divine. All praise to you, eternal Son, whose advent has our freedom won, whom with the Father we adore, and Holy Spirit evermore. We continue with our confession and forgiveness as printed in our bulletins. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. As people of God, we hear this good news. By God's endless grace, our sins are forgiven. We are free, free from all that holds us back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May we be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We greet each other. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. And together, our call to worship. Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth. Let the earth hear and all that fills it. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. This is the Lord for whom we wait. Let us be glad and rejoice in the salvation of God. And we speak our hymn of praise. My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord. I sing my Savior's praise. You look upon my lowliness, and I am full of grace. Now every land and every age this blessing shall proclaim. Great wonders you have done for me, and holy is your name. And we pray together. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. We will now light our third Advent candle. We praise you, O God, for the victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles of this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah Chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord the dis to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me in the garments of salvation, has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We'll read the psalm responsively. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. 
Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Let the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the God of peace himself Sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Amen. The story of Advent is the story of love that comes to be with each of us, no matter what. This quote from Jan Richardson really struck me this week. Let me read it again. The story of Advent is the story of love that comes to be with each of us, no matter what. What simple yet very powerful words. Here we are on the third Sunday of Advent, traditionally themed by the word joy or rejoice. Many take those words to mean happy or filled with smiles. Uh, You know, just be happy. But to rejoice, to find joy, especially in Christ our Lord, goes far deeper than just surface smiles or happiness. It's a sense of trust, of abiding, that No matter what happens, love, Christ, 
God comes to be with each of us. Isaiah speaks words of hope and comfort to a people who, though no no longer in exile, still are experiencing hard times and loss and oppression. So hear these words again. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, has covered me with the robe of righteousness. The prophet makes clear, uh, makes clear the message he has to share. And he shows them why he can live out such hope and have joy in the midst of what the world is giving out. He gives them the image of green shoots springing up so that they can hold on to that. This is what God's righteousness looks like. This is how praise will spring up like shoots from the ground. They and we can proclaim our witness of the power of the Lord. These are foundational words Jesus uses in his first sermon in Luke. And these are words for the later declaration that Jesus is Lord. As the psalmist declares, the Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. This is who the Lord God is, and we are God's people. And again, another seed image of God making all things new, of making things to grow and sprout, and that joy is the result. This theme of the messenger of God speaking words of hope and comfort in difficult times continues into our second reading. Paul's speaking to the Thessalonian church that is struggling, and they are struggling a lot. And he tells them how to live into this hope. He says, this is the way God wants you who belong to Jesus Christ to live. Rejoice. Pray. Give thanks. Don't quench the spirit. I love that last one especially. Don't quench the spirit. And then he offers them a blessing. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he reminds them, in case they don't remember, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. As Jesus' people, these words are for us as well. Because we live in the story of love that comes to be with each of us, no matter what. Then there is John, the man who came to testify to the light, the light of Christ. The priests and the Levites questioned him to see if he might be a threat. That's why the Pharisees sent them to ask the questions. There were um, aristocratic priests who lived in luxury and who were known for their brutality. John, with his poor clothing and his diet of honey and locusts, um, obviously wasn't one of them. There were action priests who stirred up trouble among the people. And then there were oracle priests who could be just as dangerous with the words they spoke. So they're questioning John, what what kind of priest are you? Why are you here? Who are you? And John just says, no, I'm just a messenger. 
okay. So they dismiss him and they leave him alone. They had no understanding how important and how powerful his message really was. John came to declare to the people then and to people of all ages, to us, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah, a light in the darkness of the world, a light the darkness could not and will not overcome. And here we are on this third Sunday of Advent. We too have been called to bring good news, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty and freedom, as the prophet Isaiah said. We have been told to rejoice, pray, give thanks, and follow the Spirit. We know that Christ is the light of the world who brings comfort and hope. We know that. And many days we can live this out without too much difficulty or doubt. But then there are those other days when the reality of COVID and distancing and masking and restrictions is so frustrating. When we feel powerless to bind the wounds of those whom we love or care about. Or to proclaim freedom in a very constrained way. Feeling like we're chained in bondage. When rejoicing and praying and giving thanks requires much focus and effort. Sometimes too much. When the light we know to be Christ seems to flicker in our day-to-day -day living like a breeze against a flame threatening to extinguish it. It is precisely in these times that the story of Advent is the story of love that comes to be with each of us no matter what. It is then we remember that Jesus is Lord, no matter what. That Jesus is our Lord, period. Our Lord, bringing love and hope and comfort and joy and light. Emmanuel, God with us coming to be with each of us, no matter what, no matter what. In this, we can trust. In this, we can rejoice. In this, we can live. Amen. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of preachers, God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world, hear our prayers for everyone in need.
God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embedded your word in their hearts. We pray especially for Alan, Pam, Pastor Amy, and our worship assistants. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and planets. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living, inspire, and guide us in the care of your creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. We pray for our national, state, and local government leaders. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. We pray especially for those on our current prayer list, Robert and Lois Dowd, Clayton Markham, Becky Oden, Nancy Jamerson, Dean McKinley, Jaden Plotner, the Rapley family, Bill Leonard, Patty Price. Those on our ongoing prayer list, John Perkins, Linda Rager Hampton, Peggy Gilbert, Mara Joy Nelson, Owen Van Oster, and family. Those from the community meal, Gary, Joanne, Margie, Bill, Karen and family, Linda at the death of her son, Mitch. Prairie, Ron, Paula, and Darren, family of Cameron, people feeling lost and alone, people suffering from COVID, frontline workers, our country. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayer for the sake of our, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with our offering prayer, and we are grateful for your continued faithfulness in sending in your offerings. We pray together. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. And we continue with the great thanksgiving. We pray together. The Lord be with us all. We lift our hearts to the Lord. We give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. With all the choirs of angels and all who have gone before, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the bread and wine we share as the people of God and disciples of Christ. Amen. Together, let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We come forward. I believe and trust. <laughs> Together we pray the prayer after communion. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And together we bless each other. The creator of the stars, bless our Advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill us with love and the unexpected spirit guide our journey, now and forever. Amen. We go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our sending hymn, which we'll sing, is 239, Hark the Glad Sound.
And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.